tell us, what's the purpose of deepening our understanding of the future? I use deepening as a way to find out what's stopping successful strategy. So more and more, I've, I've done this for the last few decades, I find there's often a story, a metaphor, a mythology that's stopping us from realizing where we wish to go. So causal learned analysis is a theory of knowledge, a methodology to help us get more robust solutions that work. So the main method is causal learned yes, analysis CLA, here. Yeah. And causal learned analysis was developed by yourself? Yes. Over many years, yes. I understand. Through foresight workshops, through action learning. So actually this method stands on a lot of those previous, or the scholarship of futures. Yes. And then also how we understand the layers of knowledge and knowing. Yeah, there's four four layers. The litany, which is the visible future, the headlines. Yep. The system, incentives, fines, the worldview, the perspectives, and the deep myth. All four are required for transformation. I think I, I get very excited by this method because for me, then, what I'm starting to realize is that those earlier pillars and those methods don't necessarily get into that critiquing of assumptions and beliefs. Yeah. Um, but this method does. Yeah. And I'll give you an example. I was working in one country, looking at their transport futures. And I said, why are you doing this? You're already ranked as among the best integrated transport solutions in the world. They said, yes, that's 2014. We've done a trend analysis which suggests by 2025 we'll have major congestion. So we need to today start to look at alternatives. So one alternative they started to look at is, what would it look like if we used our waterways more? So the question we asked was, what would happen if we use more waterways? So we started to look at that, and then what amazingly came out was, waterways would be successful, but the current metaphor of waterways is castaway. Mm. They're not important. Mm. This was in Asia, and Asians don't want to be seen if they're successfully upwardly, upwardly mobile on little boats. So there's a story around use of boats. So walk us through that as you go down the layers. Yeah, so example. level one was, okay, should we use waterways more? And then it was, what's the current system? Well, the current system is we're using roads and fines and Just highways. Level two. Yeah. Level three is, which is the dominant mode of transport, which is cars. Yeah. And then we asked ourselves, okay, so, it's, so basically it's a car road worldview. Then we said, well, what would it look like if we use waterways? So systemically, what would need to change? So there's obviously many stakeholders involved in this analysis if we're running a workshop. Yeah. So do different stakeholders bring different perspectives as they go through this? Well, method? in this case, this was really for the transport group. Yeah. It was just phase one of it. So then we asked ourselves, systemically, what would it look like if you designed a, a transport system that was waterways friendly? How would you have boats? Who would get licenses? How would it link to trains? So you're getting the group to do level each two level yes. collectively. Yes. So Rather level than... one was by 2030, 2025, here's the percent of citizens using waterways. Level two is how do we incentivize it? How do we link to other modes of transport? Level three was basically the waterway is a worldview. Here's how we see it. Now level four was the crucial part because the metaphor currently is castaway. Mm. So then they redid it to say, okay, what would it look like if we're using it effectively? So the first one really is a take of understanding current reality. Yes. Yeah. And then the second time you go through it is really layering the solution. Yes. And okay. they came away that the layer the solution metaphor is casting widely. So and the solution has all four layers in it. Yes. Great. And then you, you might say, well, if you did it with stakeholders, you would say, well, how would a citizen feel about it? So now you're talking about using CLA method differently rather than just unpacking an issue in current reality and alternative to now doing it by stakeholders. Yeah, yeah. So, so is there many ways you can use Yeah, this? well one way is deeper causation. Why is there, why are there medical errors in the health system? So then you say, well it's because of uh, doctors making mistakes, that's level one. Or is it systemic, hospital design, bad handwriting, drugs that haven't been tested? Or is it level three, the world view of the expert system in, in medicine where doctors are above, patients are low? Or is the story, doctors always right? Mm -hmm. Then you say, okay, that's our current unpacking. What might be a different way? So the new story could be, I'm an expert about my body. The world view is patient-centered. The system is, well, it's doctor plus patient having knowledge about his or her health care. And then we say, what would be the new measurement? So you could unpack it 
and you can say what might it look like differently from a different view. So then this is really, in my sense, what you're saying is that you're using multiple stakeholder perspectives, mm -hmm. same context, mm -hmm. same issue, yep. but then trying to negotiate a solution, a layered solution through these multiple perspectives by stakeholder. Yeah. yeah. So when we did this with the disability services, we found out that the current reality, the story people were saying from their view, was they see disabled persons as damaged goods. Mm. And so that has to be transformed. But you have to say, here's the current metaphor, and we measure it in certain ways, and the system is not disabled friendly. So what might be a new story? So when you say what might be the new story, I would imagine then it's crucial to have uh, be discerningly aware of who's in the room and who's not definitely, in the room. Definitely. You want a dialogue about metaphors, so a dialogue about the strategy. the department in the room, we're going to need yes. the parents, the person with disability, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the service providers. So we're going to need a range of these key stakeholders to do this type of analysis. Yes, and start simple. What do you mean? Well, with the example I used on waterways, we said let's meet with the transport experts first. Let's come up with our new strategies, our new solutions, our new metaphors. Then we might do a stakeholder workshop with citizens. How do they see water? We collect the data. Then we come to a multi-pronged integrated strategy. So it's step by step. But first do the analysis, then test it out. When you, so first do it by, so if I was facilitating this method, yeah. I would then have my group go through a topic. Yes. And that's what you mean by first do the, the simpler version of analysis. Yeah. So listening to what you're saying, Zaha, what I'm, uh, my sense of learning from using this method would be that, A, it's about trying to keep it simple initially, uh, bringing as many people and their perspectives into the analysis, but more importantly, making sure that everyone starts to bring and make explicit their assumptions, beliefs around the issues. I would say more than beliefs, I would say what is their core metaphor? So this is going below beliefs. Yeah. The metaphor again. So in one project on the education revolution, they were exploring why hasn't more and more computers being given in classrooms led to some type of transformation. At the systemic level, we found out that many of the computers weren't being used. They didn't have service contracts. People couldn't figure them out. They're being put away in closets. But as we explored deeper, the number one issue for principals were their story was, I'm in control. Mm. So the new computers changed the focus, the loci of who has power. So we had to help them let go of that story. Well, many people can be in, in control. We're all learners versus you're only the boss. So this sort of makes explicit where power hides in, in each of those levels. Yes. And also then, so if you can figure it out, you can see, well, how, because the goal is to be successful in strategy, mm. to make sure the service gets delivered. Yep. So this is what's preventing it. Is it we're measuring the wrong thing? Is it systemic? We've organized incentives and disincentives wrong. Is it we've not included many worldviews? Or is it that our metaphor is not supporting our strategy? So coming back then to just very quickly measuring, if solutions are layered from yes. all the four la levels, could we build evaluation of measures on those? Yeah, exactly. I always ask for implementation. Does your new implementation strategy have a new story? So that would be at the metaphor level. Yes. Have, are you ensuring that there's deep stakeholder involvement? So that's the cultural side. Yeah. What are the incentives you've pushed in to make sure the system responds? If there's so no incentives, people won't do it. So a new policy would be measurement of that at the systemic level? Well, then litany would be what's my new measurement? Okay. What's visible? Yeah. So I ask for implementation, all four levels being engaged with. I'd imagine one of the consequences of using this method would be that you're creating inclusion in co-creation of a future design. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Any other key messages you want to share on causal layer analysis? Uh, test it out. I mean, many people understand level one and two. Here's the visible, here's the data, here's the system. Often we forget we could have worldview blindness. Now we forget the power of metaphor. And often CLA, by engaging in multiple stakeholders, as I said earlier, democratizes metaphor or mythology. I remember um, a colleague, Lisa Fraser, once saying that when we're doing workshops um, around the Queensland, the question we're asking, and 
was does my future match my story yes and I think CLA is a great way to find out and answer that question you can add, so you can apply CLA to your own life how do I measure my own success? So does my story match my image of yeah. my own future? Are my systems I put into place, regulations about my own behavior, are they useful? Does my own story support where I wish to go? If not, what do I change? This can be quite confronting. It's confronting for those who don't believe they have a story. Because this unpacks any particular worldview. So if you have a worldview that you own the truth, then it might be confronting. Because this suggests... You may believe you have the truth, but that may be just a metaphor. So this really brings out and makes it us to come to this awareness that there are multiple ways of seeing the same phenomena. Yeah. I'm okay if they say they have their own truth. I'm just asking them, is that position, does that position serve you? If it's serving you, maybe it's okay. If you're finding by you saying that you have your own truth or believing that, that prevents success, that prevents negotiation, then, then it may not help. Okay, so this could help them critique that. Yeah, and it's unpacking. And if you can find out what's the real story around my organization, then it makes sense. We had one group where they couldn't figure out why the three big cities in Australia were competing with each other. Then mm -hmm. once we did the CLA, they said, oh my God, we're actually organized as an empire. And these are three kingdoms fighting. Mm -hmm. Then they figured out, say, oh, I, so I'm basically the king here. So the real transformational part is when you explore the worldview and the narrative. I find that. I find that very powerful. And that's where transformation yeah. comes from. But once then I've shifted story or metaphor, then it can't just be talk. I need to then ensure that systems are incentivized and measurements that match my so story. That's the pragmatism of locating it into a policy yeah. response or yes, a exactly. procedural response yes. and measuring that accordingly. So all four are needed. Okay. Any takeaway messages? I think that's it. Make sure you use all four. Make sure story matches where you're going. And be prepared to ask myself, yourself, what's my own narrative? Beautiful. Thank you, Sam.